Hello everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 67 where you send me your email questions to msargent23 at comcast.net and I'll do my best to answer them. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Let's get right to it. First one's called Satellites and it's spelled wrong. Hi Mark, thank you for your great work. What if your movies would be shorter? Maybe it would be more interesting to make playlists instead of marathon movies. Uh, and he says, and that's from Voikyo Kalan. And I'm guessing that he did not actually see my main channel. He just saw one of the documentaries that was put out there when Flat Earth Clues was mashed up and called things like Under the Dome Full Documentary and They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever and so on and so on. So I sent him to my main channel. So thank you for that. And yes, I, that was one of the first things people told me. It's like, make playlists. Okay. So I did. This one's called ISS Earth View. If it bothers to come up. There it goes. Hi, Mark. Please keep my details to yourself. Wow. All right. First videos on FE I have seen were your clues. I'm quite skeptical about things in this world in general. And as a woman, I'm a rare creature in the conspiracy world. Eh, sort of rare. Not, not entirely rare, but sort of rare, yes. I have traveled in airplanes many times, up to 40,000 feet on one of the flights. Therefore, I attached some pics for you. These are ISS pics from NASA's website versus Google Earth view from apparently the ISS uh, I altitude. Also, the curvature we should see from a long-haul flight that I never observed. An extra photo of light coming into plane at midday in December. I had a lovely suntan on this flight. Enjoy. <clears throat> After watching your clues and investigating further, I obsessed for the last six months, observed the ships going into the horizon and coming back. Hall and hall and all. Well, whatever. Observed horizon from planes, looked for long distance curvature with curvature calculator, observed moon and measured the moon's temperature, observed stars. This started me off and so I dug deep into the rabbit hole. I am highly analytical and proofreading everything I say. I have my own children as well. Can't see how I could now teach them about space. Thank you for opening my eyes. I'm planning to do a few more tests with my children. We'll see where it takes us. I am hinting little things to people around me, so I'm using the fight club rule. Good for you. Thanks for your work. Love, M. And I'm not going to read her name because she said keep the details to myself. This one's called Flat Earth Clues Part 4. It was a little long, but I'll read at least the first part. Shell Beach, String Theory, Ephesians 1, 3, 8, and a fun... No, okay. You can't you can't title the the email all the different things you're going to go into because he's all over the place. He's basically saying he wants to talk about Flat Earth Clues Part 4, Shell Beach, String Theory, Ephesians 1, verse 3 through 8, and a foundation foundational reason for the terrarium. Uh, sorry, it's a little long to, uh, to read on air, but thank you. And that's from Tim Patton of Houston, Texas. I, I will read it, but I'm not going to read it on air. This one's called... The missing ingredient. Mark, are you really trying to prove it's flat or trying to get money out of this? Cause, not because, cause, magnetic forces will disprove gravity. Call me if you're serious about this. And then his phone number. Hmm. Well, I may call him. We'll see. This one's called Survival Guide. And if it actually loads. Oh, Mark, please send me a Survival Guide from Steve Gee. And yep, anyone wants a free survival guide, it's only two megs. I can send it to you through email. It tells you what to do during a long-term power outage. You can just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net and put that in the title, and I'll just send it to you. This one's called The Moon Reflector and Why Kansas is Important. Hi, Mark. I'm working my way through your strange world shows, currently up to number 44. Wow. That's a lot of, that's a lot of listening. And had a couple hopefully interesting points I wanted to bring up. One, the moon reflector. Something simple I learned in school is when reflecting light off of a flat surface, the incoming and outgoing angles are the same. Meaning, if the laser hits the surface at a 20 degree angle, then it will bounce away in the other direction at a 20 degree angle as well, leaving a 40 degree gap between the incoming and outgoing light paths. Similar to the way a pool ball bounces 
off the edge of the table for a more relatable example. Uh, getting the laser beam or pool ball to bounce back for you can only happen if it hits the reflector at a perfect 90 degree angle. The moon reflector is supposedly a quarter million miles away and stationed on a deeply curved surface that's spinning at about 10 miles an hour, which would be constantly changing the angle of the target. If we're also on a curved surface spinning at a thousand miles an hour, how could they ever get anything lined up to make that laser shine back at us? And if they somehow did, would lose conditions, would those conditions last for more than a fraction of a second before everything spun to a different facing? Even the slightest fraction of a degree of misalignment on either the X or Y axis would send the reflected laser shining hundreds or thousands of miles off course. Something to add to the two feet of spread per mile counterpoint, Kansas and height. Uh, people are dismissing Kansas as proof the Earth is flat because, like you say, it could be just a flat part on a round globe. But I think it's important because it's a great place to run a weather balloon experiment. Put a camera on a balloon at ground level. Measure how far you can see through it without the zoom probably only a few miles, then start sending the balloon up. As it rises higher and higher, check to see if you can see things from further away. If you can start seeing landmarks at 10, 20, or 50 miles away as it rises, when we know Kansas is perfectly flat across a 400 mile stretch, that debunks the argument that the reason you see more from higher up is because you're looking over the curve. Then it becomes a matter of viewing angle and the vanishing point of perspective. Love your show. Thanks for being such a powerhouse for the cause. Regards, James. Thank you, James. Some good points there. I like that. This one's called Survival Guide. Thank you, Mark, for all you're doing. God bless. Travis Cleminger. And I sent him a survival guide. This one's called Dude Perfect. Mentions Flat Earth to their 27 million subs. Whether or not they're all real, who, who knows when you have that many. Because remember, 27 million subs, that's as much as Taylor Swift or Katy Perry, pretty much. And I don't see Dude Perfect being interviewed on daytime talk shows. Uh, Mark, someone left a comment on the latest Strange World 138 show, and it's a link to the newest Dude Perfect episode where they kid their guest performer about maybe being a flat earth believer. So cool. Here's the pinned comment from their video with 500 replies. Dude Perfect one day ago. Comment Flat Earth if you see this. Bill. Yeah. Yeah, I watched it. And you can't replicate it because they'll copyright you. Oh, no, they'll block you. I don't think they'll, they'll strike you. But it's interesting because, yeah, their guest, absolutely, you can tell, is a Flat Earther. And he's like, oh, you know, he's shy. He didn't want to believe it. So that's fine. That, that was really cool. Again, more people. 27 million subs. Yeah, I'll take that. This one's called Earth Wheel. Hey, Mark, what's up? Great work on FE. And he sent me a picture, I think. And it's a picture of, nope, he didn't send me a picture. Earth Wheel. Earth Wheel. He didn't send me anything. Just said Earth Wheel. All right, well, uh, if anyone gets that, and I don't. Uh, and that's from Eric Gonzalez. So, Eric, tell me what Earth Wheel means, please. This one's called Lights in the Sky. Um, and, and it's a quote from Ezekiel and all their stars, I will darken the sun. I will cover with clouds and the moon shall not give its light. All the shining lights in the heavens. I will darken. And that's Ezekiel 32 verse seven and eight. Hmm. I haven't read anything about planets or a spinning spherical world where water sticks to it yet. Only great lights above our wondrous immovable earth. We live on all surrounded by his impenetrable firmament. So it is written by the Most High, so it is by Him, so it shall always be from our Creator. Hallelujah. Stay manly, good sir. That's from Robert John, Robert Don. Robert Robert Day John J. Don. Cool. Thank you for that. This one's called Retired Navy Chief. And hopefully I answered him, forgot how, is it okay for me to download the show, re -up go? Yeah, I had a retired Navy chief and he was on my Strange World show as a testimony show expert. And yes, anyone, anyone can download anything from my, I've never thrown out a copyright strike to anybody. And a lot of my stuff is Creative Commons licensed. So you can take the clues, you can take the Q&A stuff, you can take anything you want on your channel. I, I've... It, I have never struck anybody. I've never called anybody out for bullying. I don't even moderate my own comments. I have a couple of other people that kind of glance around to make sure there's no hate speech. 
but I don't, you know, I'm busy. I, I've got too many things to do. I'm not, you want to spread myself around? Hey, go nuts. This one's called Your Opinion, Please, on Two Thoughts. Hi, Mark. Is space super hot or super cold? Ah, trick question. Neither. It's not there. There is no space. I find it described as both on the internet. No, I, of course, because they would describe the hot parts. Well, if you're in the sunlight next to the sun, it would be super hot. Again, if you believe in space. And if you're in the dead space near Pluto, it'd be super, super cold. I doubt if anyone really knows since no one has been there. Another thought, my buddy, a fellow flat earther, walks a lot every, walks a lot, ep, sorry, I just finished a treadmill. I'm, I'm a little, my body chemistry is off walks a lot very early in the morning when it is still dark. He said a full moon is so bright you can't even stare at it very long and it's thousands of miles away. He asked how people who were supposed to be walking right on the moon even stand the light or possibly even see each other since it would be so bright. Just wondering what you think about it, Steve Harris from Chisago City, Minnesota. That's a tough one. They really should change their name because it's so close to Chicago. But instead of a, that second C, it's an S. Chisago City, Minnesota. Although it does fit into the Minnesota Minnesota thing, don't you know, up there near the Iron Range. So, uh, yeah, it, it, that was a good point. And I think one of the first people to bring it up was Orphan Red. She, she said that, and I've seen this many times. I'm like, you cannot look at the moon with night vision goggles or binoculars. It's just blinding. Even a, even a crescent moon is really, really, really bright. And so the question is, which she brought up, it's like, okay, if it's really, really a moon is a bright, bright white down here, why were all the Apollo missions this dull, dark gray, this ashen gray that seemed to have no, re no reflective qualities whatsoever? Because from what we could see, that place should be just super overexposed and glowing all the time. And it was not. So seems to be some consistency issues there. That's from Steve Harris. Thank you, Steve. This one's called Your Name Search. Okay. Hi, Mark. I am watching your Flat Earth Clues 105 and heard that your host said that nobody can find a thing on you online. Well, yeah, that was back in 105. I immediately Google searched the page and came up with his first hit, so I don't know what he was talking about. You are an awesome guy. Never change. Thanks for all you do for our community. God bless Farinock. Uh, yeah, it used to be that way. I, I mean, you could, I was not on the internet much. I, you know, I didn't have really much of a, an internet presence and social media. I was late to the game because I don't know, I was having a good time in Colorado. No, I didn't really care about social media. And then yes, as the, the videos got more and more prominent and, and I did more interviews and I did more news stories the uh it, it just got bigger so now yes you can type me in although that picture of the guy that mark Sargent guy over there on the right hand side yeah that's not me different guy this is called very interesting video hey bro i just watched your video not my first but you're really interested in your views but you're really interested in your views adam that's from adam mamok Okay. Thanks, Adam. Awesome. They can't all be great. This one's called Really Enjoyable. Hi, Mark. I have recently become interested in other possibilities after watching a lot of science shows and debates on YouTube. I found a fair bit of what they were saying was just guess. I'm reading, just so you know, guys, I'm reading these verbatim. I'm trying not to correct. So I started to question what they were spruiking. Spruiking, S-P-R-U-I-K-I-N-G. Is that a word? A couple of questions I have that would really satisfy my curiosity are, no semicolon, why haven't flat earth believers organized their own rocket up? Uh, that's kind of a tall order, really. Seriously, look, look what it took to get SpaceX to even fake what they're doing. Uh, two, I am really suspect on Antarctica as well as all governments. I believe the world is run by the mega wealthy and anyone who is the leader at the time is just a puppet. Yeah, true. I'll go along with that. One more question. If the earth is flat and surrounded by ice, then how is it possible to guard the whole circumference? Multinational Navy, plus you don't really have to guard it too much because the whole place just screams go away. 
uh, icebergs within you know miles and miles of the shore which most sailors would just turn around and then you, know, you, you nobody owns it and your company can't set up there what do you what how are you gonna what are you gonna do in antarctica you can take a tour there that's about it i would imagine it's it's probably the most expensive tour in the world for what you're getting i would imagine it's impossible that if there was a total circumference around the earth and someone who was not part of this possible major conspiracy would have seen it anyway i will enjoy listening to you podcasts regards rohan <laughs> i'm guessing rohan's not originally from the state so we'll give him a pass this one's another retired uh, Navy chief thing. This one's called The Orville New Dimensions TV episode 2017. Sci-fi show with an episode on flat space. Yes, absolutely right. Yep. Check it out. The Orville uh, by Seth MacFarlane. They did an episode. It's, it's basically a Star Trek knockoff. Uh, and they did a show where there was this giant domed spaceship flying through the vastness of space and none of the inhabitants knew they were in a spaceship of course why, why, why would you know anything about the outside world or the outside environment the all they knew was they well in fact i'm pretty sure they thought they were on a planet as well very very interesting i think they were somewhat inspired by flat earth this one's called hi an email from rosario Staffe, argentina flat world hi mr sergeant i wanted to ask for your skype name so if you may have a few minute talk i would call you in order to make you a request about some of your youtube videos about the flat earth clues i've been following many flat earth channels like yours and would like to contribute to the job that many souls have been doing in order to help with this task of awaken many thanks for your time and with hope god bless us all that's from leone corsalini and i you know what sure i'm gonna put that in my things to do i am going to send him my skype address and he's in argentina so a call is going to be kind of a pain in the ass anyway so let's i'll find out what he wants to say this one's called Prepper Info. He spells it P-R-E-P dash E-R Info. Mark, first I want to thank you for all your Flat Earth clues. I have enjoyed watching them all and learning more of where we truly live. On one of your vids, you stated that we could request a copy of your Prepper Info. Not certain that is the proper term you used. Hopefully you get my meaning. Okay, if you don't, if you've never heard of what a Prepper is, uh, then you definitely need a prepper guide that you would send out if we made the request via email. So here it is. Thanks for all you do. Keep up the good work and stay flat, my friend. That's from Todd. And yep, I sent him a copy. This one's called Eric Dubay. Hello, Mark. I've been following you for a while now. I recently came across a new video from Eric, whom I have also have been also following for some time. I wanted to know why he claims you are a shill which he guided me towards his answer. I wanted to know if you will ever have him on your show. He will never come on anyone's show. He's never been on, on anyone in the circles that I'm in. Uh, Patricia's like, for example, Patricia Steer from Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. She's interviewed literally everyone uh, that has had a, a, a certain, it has a certain level of impact on Flat Earth. And Eric is the only one that has, has turned her down to date, as far as I know the like verbally invite him on no no i've no uh, i believe that if everyone is on the same side there should be no problem in having a discussion i know it is your show however not having eric on from all the ones that i have watched is kind of interesting hopefully whatever rift you two have can be squashed it's never going to be squashed he hates me absolutely hates me and speaking of hate his channel was taken down for hate speech so you reap what you sow there i warned him i warned him and i warned him and i warned him and then somebody smacked him then he goes regardless of the outcome of the discussion the flat earth movement has already been planted and people are starting to use facts to provide when having discussions with new people that do not know the truth yet stay flat emilio thank you emilio yeah Eric, eric's okay one he's never gonna leave thailand he's he's never he's never coming back to the states he's already said that 
I have it on reliable sources. He's not he's not coming back. He makes it really difficult for him to interview, and he promotes hate speech. Uh, I've, I've said this on several occasions. There was a Netflix meeting that was at the end of 2016, I believe, and that meeting was shut down early because they looked Eric up, tied him to the whole I love Adolf Hitler thing, and that was it because the producers in that room were Jewish. Get it? See what See what happened there? All right, this one's Chip Baker. Chip Baker sent me another song, so thank you, Chip. Yep, yep. he sends me songs. If anyone wants to uh, have a copy of Chip Baker's music, just let me know. Or if you, if you want to know any any of the songs that I use, just write me an email and say, hey, what was that song during such and such? I'll, I'll rattle them off to you. This one's called Falcon Heavy SpaceX. Oh boy, here we go again. Mark, my name is Samuel, and I left a message on your phone about the Starman SpaceX launch. And how I seen some videos calling out the fraud, but I saw something downright concrete. And I am like a deer in the headlights here. I want to share this observation with people who could pass this along. But with the landing, there is a bird that tracks right. Oh, yeah, I heard the bird thing to the left as the rockets come down real fast. Too fast, too fast. Takes 25 times speed to even be sure it's a bird. Something was doctored here. Had to be. No one is pointing that out. I want to get someone looking there because it's black and white. Not saying I can say 100% no landings took place. Just the official twin landing video was doctored. From when the plane first shows up at the top of the screen till halfway to the ground, a bird tracks horizontally at ludicrous speed. And also some unreasonably quick birds where grass meets pavement near the bottom of the screen after touchdown. They clearly are sped up, meaning that the background was either a CCTV camera shot at 1 to 5 frames per second and then sped to 30 frames to coincide with the frame rate of the rocket's layer being overlaid onto the background shot. Not sure really, but the 100% proof of tampering. Not a live feed for sure. Dead to rights. Anyways, thought someone who has a voice should have that info. Also been feeling compelled to give something to Mr. Rob Skiba, but no idea how to contact him. Yeah, Rob is a tough guy to get a hold of. He is very, very busy. He does not get back to uh, people right away. In fact, it even takes me a little while. I mean, I could make like a, a special phone call to him if I wanted to, but anyway. Just something that the Lord shared with my dad about the Tetragramma. Ramaton. Just interesting is all. Thought he would appreciate it. Feel free to give him my number as it doesn't translate well without audio. Kinda the point. I apologize for grammar and spelling. Actually, you weren't too bad. I usually make a better orator than a writer. Hoping this message finds you. God bless Samuel John Hendrakowski. Hmm. All right, then. Thank you, Samuel. This one's called YouTube Video. Mark, I just watched your video on Flat Earth. I am just a guy searching for truth in the world. Do you have any more information on this topic? I enjoyed your presentation, and this has been a topic of interest to me for years. Your input would be appreciated, Dave. And yes, he was one of those guys that just watched. He thought the Flat Earth Clues is the only thing I ever did. And, and most of the time, they don't even know I have a YouTube channel. They think my, uh, my YouTube channel is one of those other guys. So I send him the link. This one's called, Hi Mark, I'm interested in one of your products. My name is Richard, and I'm 30 years old. After a lot of research and biblical evidence, I've come to see that we are not on a globe Earth. I love the model that you created. I didn't create it. That was Chris Pontius. I would love to buy one to Steech. Boy, sometimes people, when they turn off spell checker, Steech my kids and show to my family also. Please let me know if you make any more of these. I've tried calling you three times. Thank you for your time. Uh, you see, if you called me multiple times and said, I want to buy the model, I probably would have called you back and said, no, no, go to print, uh, go to Chris Pontius's website, which is, you know, I'll just, I'll just rattle it off for you. It's flatearthmodels.com. So if you see any 3D domed flat earth models that are usually lit up on any of my videos, it's all done by the same guy, which is flatearthmodels.com. And that, his name is Chris Pontius. Good guy. Great guy, as a matter of fact. Moving on. This one's called... Air Force in-flight refueler from WOW. Mark, didn't take me long before I remembered why I shouldn't be on that game. He's talking about Warcraft. Many hours go down the drain, yes. 
Uh, anyways, would love to chat some time if you would. In the meantime, I've got a question. Whenever they have a space launch, the FAA posts something called the, t the temporary flight restriction. One thing I find curious is that I noticed was the flight restrictions are only up to 18,000 feet. Interesting. And really not that far off the coast. If they, the rockets, were climbing much higher than that, they would interfere with, interfere with routes that are not far east from there that start at 24,000 feet. If I'm at my computer next time they launch one, I'll take a look at the air traffic around on flightradar24.com. Interesting. I had not thought of that. Anywho, here's some pictures from my old job and a copy of my DD-214 toodles. <laughs> I actually said toodles. Steve. Thanks, Steve. It's awesome. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Question. Mark, I'm listening to your YouTube series on Flat Earth and came to what I believe to be a fatal flaw in the volcano idea, and that is the ancient past. You mean to tell me that the ancient Mesopotamia up to now, there's some generator-like machine beneath us melting rock to make lava. How is that even possible, and how would our ancestors even possess that kind of technology? Ah, good question, and they wouldn't. That's because we had nothing to do with the building of this place. We didn't build it. We wouldn't build the, the jet stream thing and the underwater conveyor system and the magma system. That is all by the top level builders. Not us. No, definitely not us. But thank you though for again, and, and I'm not I'm not picking on you. That's what a lot of people was like, well, how would we build it? How would old technology? It's like no 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 we it, maybe he's not religious. I mean, if you believe in God at all, you're gonna be able to grasp this. But it's this place was definitely not built by us. No way, no how. This one's called Flat Globe. Hi, Mark. I've been following your videos for almost a year now. The evidence of flat Earth is so overwhelming, it's really an overkill. The only way the globe trotters can disprove flat Earth is to get someone to circumnavigate the Earth via north-south period. The only way they can do that is to hire another Kubrick to fake it. Yeah, good luck. Who? Who? Who is the new Kubrick? Who are you going to grab? Seriously, uh, all all the directors out there nowadays are really specialized in their fields. And I mean, yeah, you can say, "Well, Spielberg could do it." It's like, eh, I don't know. Don't know if he's got what it takes. And it turns out George Lucas was just a hack, so he's definitely not doing it. So who do you got left? Uh, Roland Emmerich. You know, look at the people that have done space and science fiction movies over the past 10, 15 years. Who, who are you going to grab? I don't know. Anyway, that was from Ray Jacinto. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Otherwise, I'm going to get people that say, no, it's pronounced this way. This one's called, please talk about Florida school incident in, in Next Strange World. And this kind of shows you how far back I'm, I'm. I'm trying to catch emails up fast as I can. I'm being a little more strict as I'm screening them. Because the emails, I, I go through a screening process. I get rid of the spam and I get rid of weird little requests and stuff that isn't appropriate. And the rare troll. Well, actually, sometimes I'll save the troll emails. And so, uh, anyway, this gives you an idea of how far back. I'm back at least five weeks in the, at the moment. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to keep hammering until I become so busy that I can't do it. This one's called, hi, Mark. Okay to read on air. See, perfect. Said okay to read on air. Can you please discuss the Florida high school shooting on the next strange world or next secret show? I would like to hear the analysis from a ballistics expert perspective and also how it fits with a typical false flag operation and whether you think it's one or not. Is it a false flag? Who's doing this and why? Take care, Jack F. It's just a fear beat. That's all it really is. We, we've we been dealing with these for a while now. Uh, the ballistics, I don't even know if they've released the ballistics on, on this piece of crap that's been going on. Uh, this thing was, remember, it calls comes down to the weakest link. And with social media, stuff can be, can be dissected pretty quickly. I, I'm not going to pick on the David Hogg thing too much, only that he had an outtake reel. And there were a bunch of different news agencies that reported on it. Well, they reported on us reporting on it. And that was, if you don't know what we're talking about, just type in David Hogg outtake, outtake reel or blooper reel or whatever. And he, you know, he's talking to the news and they're, they're showing his outtakes. He's, he's, he's trying to rehearse. He's going through his lines and he's screwing up. So he's doing his lines over and over again. And you're thinking, what's that proof? I'm going, well, this is a live news broadcast, right? Or a slightly pre-recorded news broadcast. So why is he rehearsing his lines? Every actor anywhere knows exactly what he's doing it's like oh you know he doesn't have his lines down but the question is wait shouldn't he be sort of doing this spontaneously it's 
it seemed well it was very very rehearsed so for me the parkland thing eh, I, I i'm lumping it into it wasn't nearly as interesting as the mandalay bay thing or the pulse nightclub thing uh, ballistics i have no opinion on the ballistics of the florida thing because i don't think they even re really released it other than they said he had an ar-15 that's really it so I, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. It's it's just a fear beat. That's all it is. No different than any story that you see in space. And the, the underlying subtext is think about you're on a globe. You're on a globe. Face on Mars, something in Pluto, something in Saturn. It's all globe, globe, globe. It's all they, they don't care if you read the article. It's just that to remind you, it's like things are happening in space because you're on a globe. Anything that happens down here as far as mass shootings, it's like, you know, be afraid, you need us. Be afraid, you need authority. Be afraid, you need a government operation to try to keep you safe. That's all it is. Uh, and, of course, political parties jump on it and, you know, they're trying to do another, it's like <laughs> trying desperately to do a gun grab. It's like, never going to happen. Not in this country. There's too many. It's too late. Sorry, you're not going to put the genie back on that bottle. But um, that's another rant for another time. All right, let's move on, shall we? This one's called, thank you for the great work you're doing. Hello, Mark. My name is Don Lepore. I live in Staten Island, New York. Just wanted to compliment you on an excellent presentation on Flat Earth. I agree with all that you have presented. God bless you and have a blessed day, Dom Lepore. Aw, that's nice. Pretty straightforward and a little animated. Have a great day written with a flower. It appears. It's like a little GIF thing. That's kind of fun. Okay. This one's called Weird Stuff. Greetings, Mark. I ran across this website not too long ago. To me, it reinforces that our world isn't all it appears to be. I don't know how bizarre oddities like this might fit into the grand scheme of things, but I found it quite interesting nonetheless. Check it out. And, oh yeah, strangesounds.org. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, backwards, yeah. yeah. It's That's kind of fun. You can look that up if you get a chance. It's from Jeffrey Frazier. Thank you, Jeffrey. I get sent. I get sent so many links on a regular basis. I do try to click as many as I can, though, just to you know. I, I will look at probably every link for at least thirty seconds, just to see. Okay, can I can I use this in some way? Uh, this one's called Hi Mark. Interested in some of your products? This is the dome you created that would love to buy for the Bible studies and educational purposes. Yeah, I sent. I sent you the thing. And this one's called Dome. Mark, is there a speculation on how high the dome is? Is there ever? Of course there is. But I don't know how high the dome is. Uh, is it as little as 400 kilometers? Is it a couple thousand kilometers? Don't know. Don't know the layers of it. But it's can't. It's not. It's not like a snow globe. I don't think the arc is that high. I think it's much more shallow, like a like a sports stadium. Uh, let's see. He continues. I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around sunrise and sunsets. Type in flatter sun into youtube you'll find it that's from john manning uh, again it's much easier i know you have a it's it's tough to break the conditioning but remember if the sun is really 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 small if it's not four hundred thousand miles wide if it's only 50 miles wide well then you have uh, you know it should be easier to kind of figure out what's going on it's a tiny tiny little light in the grand scheme of things we're just told it's really really big this one is called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. My name is Jamie Porter. I just listened to an interview that you were in, and I wanted to see if you are real. You were right about if you get involved that it will change you, and yes, it did for me. I'm having so much getting involved with Flat Earth. I read that exactly like it was typed. I have always had a problem with my generation not contributing to society as others have, and the Flat Earth theory has done that for me. I created a fa group on Facebook, and I was wondering if... I can add you to it. I'm not on Facebook. Uh, I have a private, maybe I could make it a public group. What do you think? It's called Flatlanders with a Z. My boss's son introduced me to the theory a couple of years ago and I get laid off in the winter and I had more time to dive deeper into this and it's been awesomely fun. Please, if you would find me on Facebook, Jamie Porter out of Toledo, Ohio, and I would like to add you to our group. We are a small and new group, and it would be great to have someone like you involved in it. Oh, it's nice. I, I'm just not on Facebook. I never have been. There's some of my stuff on Facebook, but I don't. I don't monitor it. I don't. I don't update it. I don't uh, keep track of it. Thank you so much for your time and your efforts to the cause of the great wake awaking. 
something that our generation can be proud of. Till next time, Jamie Porter. Oh, that's nice, Jamie. Okay, this one's called... Ooh, new follower of Flat Earth. Hey, Mark Sargent. I'm a Christian. And I've been studying a lot over the past few weeks. Uh, and what you guys say and the proof that you have makes sense. I still do have a few questions for you, if that's okay. One, with the Flat Earth model, how can we explain wind and the formation of storms and things of that nature? Two, how do I go about sharing this information with people about without sounding crazy? I've already convinced so many of my friends and even my parents to this model since it's backed up biblically. But still, I have those that aren't open to the idea. Thanks for pushing this movement to expose corruption. God bless Samuel MacArthur. Uh, how can you explain wind in the formation of storms? Look, it's a giant pressurized system. That's how I explain wind. It's you're, it's an enclosed dome structure, and if it's pressurized, you can do just about anything you want, weather-wise. And as far as sharing this information, it's not your job to convince them. It's just put the idea in their head, let it rattle around, and watch the fun. Because a lot of people, they, they, you know, they'll quietly, they'll, they'll mock you, they'll, they'll wave you off, and then they'll go home and they'll start watching videos. And either they'll get frustrated and they'll stop watching videos, or they'll get sucked in deeper and deeper, and then they finally turn, and then they're one of us. One of us. Okay, this one's called Flathead. Oh, it's troll email. Mark, you are the biggest moron on the planet. When can I call in to displace your stupid ideas and fix what's wrong you are making with the world? That's from Richard Lynch. Uh, it's You can call in. You can call my phone number anytime you want. I don't know if I'll answer. But you can... Uh, in fact, I forgot to turn on my phone this morning. Let's turn it on now, shall we? And... You can call into the Strange World show, which is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And the phone number is 213-233-3998 or 720-897-6111. So have fun with that, Richard. This one's called March 2018 Documentary. Hi, Mark. I've been watching these videos from all the Flat Earthers and the other side as well for a few months now. It's tough to decide you disagree with most of the world, but I'm pretty sure you guys are on to something, so I keep watching. The other day, I stumbled across a video about... What Brazilian, oh uh, yeah, this is the documentary, about uh, Brazilian scientists have been working on uh, with laser testing. They've been studying our world for seven years. No, seven years, yeah, not, no. they're saying seven years, it's not, they have not been doing it seven years, and have put the, all the data together to form a model of our non-globular Earth. Globular? Globular? Their documentary is coming out next month, yep, it just came out recently, and you guys can check it out if you get a chance. Wondering if you have seen the preview. I've actually watched the whole thing now. Would like to know your thoughts. It's done by Daclia Research called Convex Earth. Yep. Seems like the debate is over. Thank you for your time and diligent truth-seeking efforts. Sincerely, Ren Walker. Good name, Ren Walker. WW. So... Uh, yeah, I watched the documentary and it was good. I thought the experiments were excellent. The first hour of it were, were good. You know, it comes off as sort of a, a cheap knockoff of ancient aliens, the way they, they laid it out. But at the same time, uh, it, it helps us, you know, because it was done in three different languages and you know, they, they did put a lot of time into it. I will say this. Is it the, the gospel of flat earth? Not necessarily. They still believe in some sort of geocentric model and it's kind of a lumpy asteroid floating through space and they kind of hinted towards the end, but they really didn't go into it much that there's a whole other continent on the outside that they can prove. So you can take that with a grain of salt. But I did add it to my flat earth shortlist for new people because the experiments were done uh, uh, well enough that it should raise some eyebrows. I liked it. I, I, you know, that part of it. Again, do I think it's the, the end all be all of flat earth stuff? No. No. Are there better documentaries? Yes. But it was good. I mean, heck, it was Brazil. They did a nice job. Uh, but it, uh, it, you can't, everybody's got their own ideas. If it helps the flat earth community, which it will, I'm for it. Uh, and I can't necessarily criticize their model. Hey, their model may be right. I, I don't believe it, but it's, uh, but again, if it gets people into the, the community and gets them thinking it's a win. Next one is called Croatia is flat. Hi, Mark. Be informed that Croatia is flat. 
in Croatian. Oh God, I've got it. In Croatian nat national anthem named Our Beautiful Homeland, we are proudly singing O oh, Beloved, Wear Your Flat Plains from the year 1835. From Croatian mountain Velebit over our flat Adriatic Sea, you can see Italy. Really, that's part of the song. Even distance is more than 100 miles, 160 kilometers. God bless you, America, and all people on flat earth. Best regards, Stanko Perik, Zagreb, Croatia, Europe, flat earth. <laughs> nice. That's cool. He gave me his mobile number. It's really, really cool. This one's called your bio on our website, flat earth, flatuniversity.com. Hi, Mark. Just want to let you know I featured you on our website at flatuniversity.com. I wrote up a short bio about you on our YouTubers page, but I would like to know if you want something different written about it. If so, send me whatever bio you want shown, around 100 words preferably, and I will happily put that up. Thanks for all your hard work and have a wonderful day. Also, if you have any recommendations of other leaders in the Flat Earth Truth Movement, any Flat Earth gear to sell, videos, etc., please let me know and I will post it. That's from Kristen Springer. Thank you, Kristen. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Big fan, longtime listener. Love the new website. Please send Survival Guide. God bless. Marjorie Carlisle. And yep, she got a copy of Survival Guide. I can tell because my new email system it actually shows me if I send something back to them. This one's called Flat Earth or New Propulsion System Exposed. Hello, Mark. I don't usually watch or seek out UFO channels, but this one showed up on my YouTube channel when I was watching a video. This video is primarily about an artist slash engineer that worked for various skunk work projects and does a PowerPoint about his work and the work of others. At 15 minutes, 30 seconds, the speaker begins to tell the story that led him to finding out about this propulsion system. If that's true, it proves a lot about unidentified flying objects that have been seen by the public. Very interesting. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Oh, and he sent this to Bob and Jaron and a whole bunch of other people. Eh, okay, cool. I'll I'll check it out. I got a chance. I mean, you can send me UFO things, but I've been watching UFOs with night vision for a long time, so chances are I'm not going to be too stunned. Plus, I've got that, that, just that great video. I, I should dig that one up and put it back online. My favorite, maybe I will, my favorite um, uh UFO video of all time was taken at dusk and the lights weren't even on this thing up in uh, up in Victoria of all places a few years before I lived there anyway this one's called truth about Rob Simmons video Mark a known troll in the comments section blue marble insisted that the flat earth channels faked Rob Simmons infamous quote saying his image was photoshopped so I did some research and found out the original video was not put out by NASA. It was a video by Flora Lichman, a video editor for, for NPR, not a NASA employee. It was produced by and for a website called Science Friday. It has been deleted from the Science Friday website and sci-fi YouTube channel, no doubt due to all us calling Rob out on it. Flora did an interview on NPR the week it was released in 2012 and corroborated the Photoshop comment. NASA put out the news blurb touting her mini documentary interview. Flora is the chick voice. <laughs> you were doing so well until then. Chick voice, you can't say it. It's 2018. You know, me too. The chick voice in that Blue Marble 2.0 video. I downloaded the NPR interview and made a video to shut this troll up. The description contains all the links to the resource materials, and I've included screenshots of them in my video, and that's from Bill. And let me click on the video just so you guys, if you want to check it out. The video is called Flora Lichman, L-I-C-H-T-M-A-N, explains her Rob Simmons Photoshop Blue Marble 2.0 interview on Flat Earth. You know what? Why am I not subscribed to you, Bill? It's Bill Keith. Jeez, he's done work for me for a while now. So thank you for that. And I don't really see that much controversy when it comes to the Rob Simmons thing. It's, it's obvious it's a real deal and it's absolutely photoshopped and I've seen the original or the, the reproductions down at NASA myself when I went to the Houston Space Center with Patricia Steer when you're in there the, on the their big thing is the the 747 with a space shuttle on top you know space shuttle's not being used anymore and they're all hollowed out but they've got you know you walk through and take pictures and in the 747 section there is one of Rob Simmons blue marble shots right there Print it out in NASA and it looks exactly, you can see the Photoshop, the, the cloning tool, right right there at Houston. So if you guys are ever in Houston, check that out. Take a picture. It's, it's absolutely real. Absolutely cloning tool. Absolutely there. So 
This one's called SpaceX Landings. Mark, please tell me your thoughts. Haven't seen anything from you or the guys on this yet. I sent this stuff to Jaron as well. Watch all different camera angles, and you will notice the landing show different smoke effects. Yep, yeah, this... Uh, has, some have smoke, some don't, or very little. The two rockets are almost exactly landing together, and some angles show them separated a little bit. All the shots don't seem to line up. Uh, so did this thing happen, or what? Do we have the technology to land backwards? No. Oh, my God, no. No. In fact, they ripped off that technology, just the idea of the technology they ripped off from Battle Los Angeles, a movie from a few years ago. Pulse thrust technology. We don't have it. We got, we got pulse propeller technology, and that's from, you know, that we use in little drones. But pulse thrust, you know, actual rocket thrust? Oh, good Lord, no. Again, watch Battle Los Angeles. Look specifically, you want to see it close up, look for the bus scene. In fact, you could probably type in uh, Battle Los Angeles bus into YouTube, and you'll see it where the, 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 the drone things are flying over. They they don't use a, a, a UF engine, unified field engine. They use pulse thrust technology. Lots of really rapidly firing rocket motors that uh, that act like or super jet motors that that help buffer the the craft. And it's interesting. So anyway, the the Starman space footage is completely unreal, of course. But I'm just wondering about this. I would love to see with my own eyes. Tell me your thoughts. This bugs me. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, it's all a piece of crap, Dave. The fact it was just a test to see if you could fake space on the cheap, and they cannot. Moving on. Rotations of the stars and survival guide. Hi, Mark. Two things. Please send me your survival guide. I did. Two, a question about the star rotation. A speaker I recently heard who is from Australia said that the stars rotate counterclockwise down under and clockwise here in the northern hemisphere. He claims that only a globe can explain this difference. How do you respond to this? Multiple projection systems on a domed ceiling easy to do we've been doing this in software for 15 years at least yeah, how do i know this oh i don't know because warcraft has been around for 14 years world of warcraft not to mention the originals uh, this is this is what we do it's instancing realization of an object we can do multiple projection systems ask anybody who's in software absolutely can be done thanks brian stokes moving on this one's called help in understanding hi again mark your videos make too much sense why is it so difficult to get my friends to view them because they're in denial i took the university of i took the university of illinois master naturalist class taught by retired professors from the u of i i gently asked questions about their global warning warming chatter I asked them if we are in an enclosed system and how does that work? And if we are living in God's creation, the 93 million miles away doesn't work. And if you truly are men of science, shouldn't you use the scientific method to either prove or disprove the globe or a flat earth? Ugh, I just get, it's when you wonder, I just get laughed at and mocked when no one will talk to me. Helps me help Mickey. <laughs> well, yeah, when you put it like that, it's there's no real soft way to introduce flat earth unless you want to come at them sideways and and say that yeah i've been watching these idiots and you seriously you've got to take the other side if you're going to bring it up to people like that and say oh, i saw these weird things on youtube what do you think i think you know and, and even chime in it's like i think they're crazy do you think they're crazy and see what happens and then if they turn it's like no i don't think they're crazy it's like i don't either i was just checking this one's called survival guide exclamation point hey mark Really appreciate a free survival guide. Hopefully we won't have to use it. Seriously, though, I'm prepping. Thanks, <laughs> Stephen Crow. Nice. Thanks, Stephen. This one's called... What's it called? My effort to promote flat earth awareness. Okay. Hi, Mark. I enjoy your videos and feel that you are a good representative of the flat earth reality movement. I do believe it is a movement with the main purpose being to wake people up to the flat earth reality. I do not currently produce video content on YouTube, but I do leave the following comment on Globehead videos. There is no space. There is no ionosphere, stratosphere, troposphere, or thermosphere. Only upper atmosphere. Only upper, upper atmosphere. No rocket has ever traveled higher than 80 miles. 422,000 feet into the Earth's upper atmosphere. Why? Because nitrogen gas, 79% of the air, turns to liquid nitrogen at negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit and liquid nitrogen becomes a solid at negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit. Project Dominic, Project Fishbowl. Just look at an actual temperature gauge on any rocket launch. The upper Earth's atmosphere is much colder than the Luciferian Freemasons tell, it is, tell us it is. We live in a closed system uh revel in that discovery 
NASA, Blue Origin, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, and any other company associated with space flight is working in cooperation with world governments, CIA, to scam billions of taxpayer dollars, which in turn will be funneled into the psychopathic ruling elite that will ultimately be used at some point in the future to depopulate the Earth via the UFO hoax by over 90%. When I when I go down in voice, that's I'm reading something in parentheses. I believe this is uh, their final objective unless they are unmasked. When Satanists are unmasked, they melt like the Wicked Witch of the East. Ooh, good there. Eh, Wizard of Oz reference. Without deception, they have no fuel for their wickedness. Haven't you wondered why the mainstream media is just recently embracing and giving credibility to UFOs? Because that's how they will depopulate the Earth, by blaming the UFOs for the mass extinction of 90% of the population. Media takes its marching orders from the government. 9-11 was only a test run. Hmm. The ISS, International Scam Station, is the main propaganda arm of all governments to keep people in the heliocentric matrix so they will not connect with their own divinity. It's all about control. These Satanists play chess, not checkers. So the control has to be by free will. All the actor knots are sociopathic liars who have made the Faustian bargain. Wow. As Mr. T once said, <laughs> really? He goes, pity the fool. You're actually using the word Faustian and Mr. T literally in the same paragraph. That's bold, my friend. Lastly, I really like the biblical statement, the truth shall set you free. Free from what? Free from deception. When a flat earther tells you to research flat earth, do it. Flat earthers are God's children. Why? Because God is the truth and flat earth is truth. As flat earthers are connecting with the true nature of their environment, they are connecting with God. You globe heads can put that in your Einsteinian pipe and smoke it. Keep up the great videos. Andrew Pomeroy. <laughs> you know what? We're going to end on that one. Seriously, I, I don't know who's going to be able to follow that with anything. So, yeah, it's a couple minutes early. Uh, thank you for everyone who has emailed me so far. Anyone that's going to do so in the future, you can send emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And before you go, if you have time, do me a favor because I still not, have not heard from Red Letter Media who I sent them some, some prints to get them to autograph it and send it back to me. Do me a favor. If you have time, if you're sitting in front of your computer, it takes two seconds, write, send a letter to contact at redlettermedia.com and just say, Mark Sargent wants his stuff and send it. You don't even have to put anything in the, in the body of it. Just, just send that. I'm hoping that they get enough of those. Someone will say, who the hell is Mark Sargent? And why? what stuff does he want from us? Because I haven't gotten anything from them. So anyway. Until next time, guys, stay flat.